Welcome back to another episode of the Constructive Liberty Podcast. Today is Wednesday, March the 24th, 2021, and this is episode number 31. Today, I want to talk about finding your purpose in life. So often we walk through life kind of aimless, not knowing where it is that we're going. Imagine going into Walmart or Costco or a place like that, not knowing what it is you're after. You would just wander aimlessly through the store. You might find some things that would pique your interest and buy some things, but you wouldn't come out with a useful semblance of groceries and whatever it was that you bought. It would have not really a purpose. You go into a place like that with a plan in mind, with a to buy list and you come out ready for that party or ready to go do the project that you're working on. That is purpose. I've got a quote for you today. This from Ralph Waldo Emerson. The purpose of life is not to be happy. It's to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, to have it make some difference that you have lived and lived well. Before we jump into the main topic of the show, I've got a couple of little productivity hacks for you, and these are really to-do list management methods, and they come at it from a little bit different perspectives, kind of similar but slightly different. So one of them, this one I get from Nicole Sauce, is called the My Three Things Method. Every day, you write down your three do-or-die list items for the day. This is usually done best if you write them out the night before, so you have a game plan for how you want to attack the day and you're ready to go when you get up. Three things only. No more than three things on the list. Sometimes you might not even have three whole things on the list, but your mind works best in threes. This is true. The other method is the one, three, five method. You've got one big things, thing, that's singular, one big thing, three medium things, and five little things. So that might be, your big thing might be the job for the day. I'm going to go build a deck, or I have to... um fulfill whatever widget amount for this client. And then you've got three little things that could be like um, do some garden weeding and plant some things and take care of the animals. And then you've got five little things might be read a book for a little bit, spend some time with the family or whatever those might be for you. But that's the two methods are the my three things and the one, three, five method. They both work really well if you work them. I've got a story to share for you. This comes from betterlifecoachingblog.com, and it's about finding your purpose in life. A frustrated young man went to see a wise man in his village. I don't know what to do with my life, he said. How do I find my purpose? Follow me, said the old man. Silently, they trudged together to a faraway river where they found dozens of prospectors panning for gold. There are three types of prospectors here, the sage man said. Whatever do you mean, asked the young man. There are those who strike gold right away, and excited, they take their plunder, cash it in, and live comfortably for the rest of their lives. Then there are those who pan for years. They know the gold's here, and they've seen others strike it rich, so they persist until they too find the gold that they've been searching for. What about the third type? asked the young man. They are the individuals who get frustrated that they haven't found what they're looking for, so they, after a day, week, or year... They give up and walk away, never finding the gold. Slightly confused, the young man asks, What's this got to do with finding my purpose? He obviously wasn't a very bright individual. Ah, yes, the age-old question. The old man smiled and looked his companion in the eye. There are those in life who look for their purpose and seem to find it almost immediately. From a young age, they have a clear sense of purpose and they pursue their dreams with energy and enthusiasm. Others have to look a bit harder, perhaps for many years, but if they persist and keep looking, they'll find something to live for. And finally, there are those who know that they want to know their purpose, but they become frustrated with the search and they give up too soon and just go back to living a meaningless, wandering life. The young man asked, can everyone find their purpose? Is there gold in the river? The man responded. So how do I find my own purpose? Well, you keep looking. But what if I want to find it quicker? Son, there's no guarantees that you'll be able to find it quickly. The only guarantee is that if you give up and stop looking for it, you'll never find it. 
The young man looked despondent, feeling that he had wasted his time with the old man, but he felt a reassuring hand on his shoulder. I can sense your frustration, said the old man, but let me assure you, if you can find your true calling in life, you will live with passion, make the world a better place, and be richer than you can imagine, and feel as though the very face of God himself is smiling on you. That might happen next week, next year, or in a few years, but the search will be worth it, and your life will never be the same again. So for now, your purpose is to find your purpose. And there's one thing I forgot to mention. What's that? The young man asked. Just as those men and women need to get down in the river with a pan to find their gold, so we have to remain active to find our purposes. We don't sit around at home doing nothing. So, what are you doing to find your purpose? Obviously, the topic of today's show is purpose. And as described by Dictionary.com, it's a noun. The reason for something, purpose is the reason for which something exists, or is done, made, or used. It's an intended or desired result, the end, aim, and goal of a thing. So what is the reason that you exist? Sure, yes, it's because God made you. And that's true, yeah. But why were we made? To, to be used to bring Him glory? Well, yeah, absolutely. You're getting a little closer to the answer. But how we are to be used to bring God glory and honor, that is the question. And if we can answer that, there's so many other questions that we have will either be answered or rendered insignificant. What is the intended result, end, aim, or goal of our existence? That's what we should all be seeking. In Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey talks of the funeral exercise And I've mentioned that before, but in that exercise, you imagine yourself in what turns out to be your own funeral, and as you're listening to what the people in attendance have to say about you in reflection of your life, what do they say about you in your imagination? It's your imagination after all. So what would you like for them to have said about you? Were you a grumpy old, mean old person who just snapped off at people and got upset and angry all the time? Or were you an engaging conversationalist who always made people, no matter who, feel as if they were important to you. What are some things that you want to hear at your funeral? Let me know. Think about that a while. For myself, going through this exercise really, excuse me, for myself, going through this exercise really made me stop and think. Am I living my life in such a way as to bring the response from people that I would hope to hear at my funeral? What exactly do I hope those people would say about me? As I thought about that a while, I realized that within the past couple of years, I have changed my course, and the path that I'm following now is one that has a much greater chance of helping me live up to those ideals, those high and lofty goals. But what are those, you might ask? What is my goal and my ideal? It's a bit rough around the edges. can use some more work, but here goes. My purpose is to live life as free as possible and to model that for others. To not be tied down with debt. Not worry about the news or propaganda or whatever that may be. And to be ready for any opportunity that may come my way. Flexibility. I want flexibility. And I want every interaction with each person to be an inspiration for them to go out and have a positive influence on their world. I want to create massive impact. Now, I know I don't get even close to that in real life. And you can sit here behind a microphone creating a podcast, and it can sound like life is just all rainbows and unicorns. I don't have it all together. I I am still a work in progress. But I'm working towards becoming the kind of man who can create that kind of impact on the world around me. The purpose of life, though, isn't about the deathbed like in the funeral exercise. It's the journey there. Are you and I doing our part to bring the message of God's love to those around us? You do have to finish well, and you've got to be faithful in the little things. But it's not just about the little things. Those things don't do it for me. That's not enough. I want more than little things. I want big things. I want massive things. I want purpose in my life. I want to be used. I want to know what that purpose is. I don't just want little things. I want big things too. And that is terrifying to ask for. That is why the servant in the biblical parable buried his talent instead of using it. If we have any talent at all, though, it comes from God above, and it's designed 
to be used to bring Him glory. Not to be hidden, not to be buried, not to be brought back to Him only slightly used. It's to be well-worn, used up, nothing held back. So I ask you again, what is your purpose? What's my purpose? How can I use that funeral exercise to know what I'm supposed to do? Now, yes, I believe that God gives us room to interpret exactly what and how we will use the talents He's given us. But that also places more responsibility on us to get it right, to do what's right, and to be faithful in those little things so that we can have more to do even bigger and better things. In looking for specific life purpose, start with what keeps you up at night. The thing that drives you, the purpose, the problem that you would love to be able to solve for people. Who is it that you want to help and in what way would you like to help them? That funeral exercise? Well, you might have an idea of your values based on the answer you came up with of what people would say about you at your funeral, about the legacy that you want to leave behind. You can really hone in on your core values with this. Look for a list of core values online and go through them and and mark out the 10 or 15 that most speak to you. And then narrow that down until you have three to five core values that really line up with what you want in life, that line up with who you are. Everything in your life should reflect those values. Your work, the things you do when you're alone, how you treat your kids and your spouse and the relationships around you, the way you act in public, the work that you do should reflect those values. Everything should be weighed against that and to see if it's found wanting or if it measures up. Also, find and build a community of people around you who care about you, people that you care about as well. Find people that you can help with no expectation of return, as well as people who have the capability of helping you when you're in need. Share your story and listen to their stories. Nothing makes a person feel as valued as when they feel heard and understood. Care for what hurts them and heal where possible. Now, I can't tell you what your life purpose should be. I can't even give you the specific steps that each one of you needs to take to find your purpose in life. Maybe you've already done that work. What I've done, though, is left you with a starting point, hopefully left you asking questions about your purpose, what it is that you want to do in life. And that is where it all begins. That is the start of bigger, better, greater things in your life, in your family's life, and creating an impact in the world. That's all I've got for today. But before I go, I want to make an offer to you. If you are seeking life purpose, if you don't know where you're going, what you're doing, find somebody that can talk you through it, that can have a curiosity discussion with you, curiously exploring what it is that you do want, what your purpose is in life. If you don't have somebody in your life like that that you can talk with, reach out to me. I'd love to have that conversation with you. Now, I want to leave you with a question. In six months, if things continued on their current trajectory for you, would you be happy with the way things ended up or with the way things were at the end of six months? How would you feel about that? That's all I've got for today. Go out and do good work.